Hi everyone, this is uh, Dan, and uh, this is, uh, I guess, a pretty sad video. Uh, Denny O'Neill has passed away uh, yesterday, and for those of you who don't know, uh, Denny O'Neill is a very famous American comic book writer and uh, also editor. Uh, worked at both DC Comics and Marvel Comics, has worked on a lot of great stuff and has written a lot of great stories. And uh, he passed away yesterday, uh, age 80, 81, I should say. Uh, you know, good age, long life right there. And I, I guess when I heard the news, uh, I had a very, I guess you could say, mixed reaction. Because uh, I've always had a mixed feeling about uh, Denny O'Neill. Uh, he has written some stories that I absolutely love and then some stories I'm not too hot on. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, one thing I will say is, uh, I had an enormous amount of respect for him. Very great writer and one of the last, uh, great American writers from the old era, uh, back when comics was more of a professional industry, I guess you could say. Uh, you know, and it, it's kind of sad. I've been kind of reading through on his life again. And also I, I actually sat down and reread the entire Green Lantern, Green Arrow run again, even the issues I don't like. Uh, I will say this and get, get it out of the way. I don't uh, agree with uh, Denny O'Neill politically on much of anything. Uh, but regardless of that, his talent and what he accomplished was uh, just impressive. Honestly, if you go back and you look at it and you, you read through it, uh, that it really doesn't matter uh, to me. Political disagreements... Uh, Unfortunately, nowadays, it feels like you cannot disagree with people politically without it becoming personal, uh, which is sad. And maybe that's the state of the country I live in America at this time. Uh, but uh, regardless of political views, uh, I have an enormous amount of respect for Danny O'Neill. Uh, he made some amazing uh, stories, a uh, great editor, and, uh, you know, had a, had a great life, too. I think it's important to note, uh, Danny O'Neill, uh, so uh, I hate to spout off the Wikipedia, but Danny O'Neill uh, was born and raised in the Midwest, I think, uh, yeah, St. Louis, Missouri, uh, raised Catholic, uh, went on, uh, graduated from St. Louis uh, University with a, uh, a bachelor's in art. Uh, he joined the U.S. Navy and actually participated in the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, and then was uh, writing columns when he was uh, discovered by Roy Thomas, who brought him along to uh, eventually work at uh, in the early days at Marvel Comics. Danny O'Neill was actually one of the uh, first group of writers that came right after Stan Lee. Uh, and he wrote uh, quite a few interesting stories there at Marvel Comics. Uh, in particular, uh, Denny O'Neill was on the X-Men uh, right before the first run of X-Men, right before it was canceled, and then rebooted into uh, giant size X-Men with, uh, you know, Len Wein and, and uh, Chris Claremont. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people don't know that. There, that, uh, that last, I guess, run of the first run of X-Men was done by uh, Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams. A uh, very cool uh, set of issues. Uh, and then he went to work on at Charlton Comics, and eventually he got discovered by Dick Giordano, who brought him into DC Comics. And this is kind of where he's most famous for his DC Comics. Uh, you know, had had some, uh, you know, started off, I believe, on oh yeah, he, he started off on Wonder Woman and JLA. Uh, he made some, I, I will say, questionable decisions on the Wonder Woman book. Uh, some of it, some people blow it out of proportion, uh, such as, uh, you know, the, the depowering Wonder Woman, you know, that's not necessarily depowering the superhero is not necessarily, uh, a bad idea, but, uh, some of his other decisions on the book, uh, didn't work out too well. Uh, but probably in the early days, what he's most well known for is Green Lantern, Green Arrow. And, uh, again, I've done reviews on a lot of the issues. Uh, there's, you know, some issues I'm not a fan of, but there are, absolute freaking gems in that run uh in particular uh i'm very fond of uh there, there's several issues where uh you know that that denny o'neill is of a liberal mind point but he's such a phenomenal writer that he's able to really take himself out from his position and really showcase both sides of the characters that he's sort of using and he, he does use uh hal jordan as a 
a bit of a punching bag through a lot of the run, but he also makes sure to show that Hal Jordan is a hero in his own right, just as heroic as everyone else in that book. So it, it I, I've been rereading it, and I'm kind of like coming to a, uh, I guess, a, more of a middle ground in my feelings. I used to not like that run, uh, but now it's like the more I read it, the more I end up really liking that run, despite the, you know, politically slanted issues in it. Uh, you know, there, there's another really good story, or Green Arrow story, ironically, in a Green Lantern run, uh, with uh, between Green Arrow and Speedy, which is really, really good. Uh, I think it's uh, 85, yeah, issue 85. And uh, yeah, if you can, yeah, if, if you want to grab a grab an issue out of that, you definitely got to pick that one up. Uh, Danny O'Neill is also, in general, he's very famous for teaming up with Neil Adams. Uh, those two are basically a power team. Uh, throughout much of the 70s and even uh, beyond and uh, you know what they're they're very famous for kind of uh, reconfiguring uh, Batman during the 70s uh, to be more of a uh, well what he's more known for to this day I don't actually have those Batman comics and I really need to get them I've been thinking of getting either a trade back paperback or an omnibus a lot of people tell me that the Neil Adams omnibus for those Batman issues is is bad. I'm not sure. I got to go find out a good deal on those Batman books because uh, I've been kind of avoiding Batman for a while. And I think like uh, I'm not really a good old school comic, you know, reviewer if I don't go over, you know, the great Batman issues of the 70s. Uh, but yeah, he, he did a whole bunch of other stuff, invented a bunch of characters uh, with Neil Adams like Ra's al Ghul. Uh, and I think he also, uh, did a bunch of other, yeah, he, he worked on, uh, like a bunch of other stuff at, at DC. Some of it I'm not really interested because I'm not as big of a DC fan as I am a Marvel fan. He did eventually return, uh, to Marvel Comics, uh, wrote some amazing Spider-Man and Daredevil. Uh, Denny O'Neill was kind of like the bridge, uh, between like Frank Miller coming on and off of Daredevil and uh, he also uh, created the the uh, character that would later become Lady Deathstrike, and allegedly, allegedly, he named Optimus Prime from the Transformers. Allegedly, I say allegedly because I don't know how true that is, uh, but a lot of people say that. Uh, and yeah, I, I think the the one thing I do want to mention about O'Neill, and I know I'm kind of just spouting off like, oh, he's done this, he's done that, da 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 da. Uh, is that in the later part of his life, he came to a kind of realization when he was working as an editor for DC. And that is, uh, you know, something that I think a lot of people eventually come to when they work with characters and writing for a long time, which is learning to respect the characters that you work on and that you create. And uh, and I think I'm going to pull this quote here because it's it's apt. And I think, you know, in memory of, of, of Denny O'Neill, it should be said. It changed my mind about what I do for a living. Superman and Batman have been in continuous publication for over half a century. And it's never been true of any fictional construct before. These characters have a lot more weight than the hero of a popular sitcom that lasts maybe four years. They have become post-industrial folklore. And part of this job is to be the custodian of folk figures everybody on earth knows batman and robin and that i think is one of the the un unkind of spoken legacies of denny o'neill and the later half of of his life was that he spent most of his time you know at dc in editorial you know protecting you know these characters from you know just willy-nilly writing you could say like, you know, it, this sounds kind of silly, but you got to remember in today's modern comics, the X-Men are now villains. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, and, and a lot of characters are basically either parodies or absolute, you know, complete deconstructions of what they once were. And, uh, you know, I, I love Marvel, but I do have to say one thing that I admire of DC is is just in general, they have much more respect for their characters than Marvel does. Marvel does a lot of, like, especially modern Marvel uh, of the last, I guess, 10, 15 years, does a lot of really weird and stupid shit with their characters. And DC, I feel, at least tries to uh, protect their characters a little better. 
And uh, some of that is is Denny O'Neill's legacy, right? His sort of change in editorial style towards, uh, you know, the later half of his career in life. Anyhow, I, I feel like I've been, I've been going on and on about this a little too long, but... Uh, you know, I, it it's really sad news, and it's a, it's a great loss for comics and just in general fiction and literature. What I didn't always agree with him politically, but I loved his writing, and you know, always uh, he was really an amazing talent and an incredible, uh, an incredible you know force, I guess you could say, in the comic book industry. You know, rest in peace, Danny O'Neill. I hope you're with family and loved ones. You know, Godspeed. <laughs> 